preparing live. Oh, now, yeah, good evening. We're live on Facebook. Yes, <laughs> after a month. <laughs> Because nowadays we're doing this map test as monthly. As we all know, we are all busy in our lives. You know, we are working like now. I got my three days off. So I'm spending this IFNG. <laughs> and also, man is also busy at work and family. For sure, you guys are also doing the same. So yeah, please say hi um, to all our Zoom participants. We are 35 participants right now here. And for our Facebook, please don't forget to share this or tag your friends. Okay, yes. So hello, Mandy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm feeling great. And I think everyone is waiting for Black Friday. And some other oh. company, they are changing it to other color, like White Fridays. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't what, does know. The, what does the color mean? Like, can I just be like Friday? <laughs> um, maybe they just want to be different. Yeah, maybe, um, like a good, a good, like all these years, and no one's thought of a better name than than Black Friday. I don't okay. know. Maybe um, so because some people, or maybe most of the members here, you know, planning to go to the U.S. So we're um, going to ask you what is Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Just yeah, of course. Brother. Yeah, this is according to me. So <laughs> if that's not a universal definition. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just according to Mandy. So yeah, Thanksgiving is, you know, like a a day that we get together with family. Some people have Friendsgiving where they get together with friends and they sit around and they eat a lot of food. Turkey is often eaten, but as you guys know, I don't eat meat, so I make some alternatives. Um, yeah, there's eating um, in, in our family. My grandma always turns on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, which mm. goes through New York. And yeah, that's an NYC. Yeah. And with um, like balloons. Is that balloons. Yeah, there's big yeah. balloons. There's always some kind of fiasco, like some balloon goes crazy or or whatnot. You know, it's yeah. kind of funny to watch. And then um, I think that's been going on yeah. since a really long time. And then yeah. people watch football, you know, American football, not soccer. Yeah, and if it's that, that's the um, Super Bowl. Is that what the mean? Super Bowl is in Jan the end of January or February. But yeah, the Thanksgiving Day game is usually the most watched game besides the Super Bowl because mm. everyone's sitting around and they're just like wearing their fat pants and so tired from eating so <laughs> and cooking. And then, yeah, you mentioned Black Friday. So so at least in the past, what we do is we eat, everyone rests, then we eat some more leftovers, rest again. And then stores will open like at midnight on Friday because Thanksgiving's always on a Thursday. So they'll open at midnight on a Friday, which is, you know, zero. I don't know how you guys um, say it. Yeah. They say it in different places in different parts of the world. So anyway, at midnight and they open because they usually have like big sales. So yeah, if you ever Google Black Friday and Walmart, you'll see some pretty funny videos of people fighting for TV. Yeah, or, so that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, um, sometimes it's chaotic scene mm -hmm. and everyone is pushing each other. We could stamping. call it, consumerism <laughs> at its worst right <laughs> yeah okay so yeah let's begin so i would like to call on our members who wants uh, who's going to participate in our speaking mock so let's first let's bring sheena and please raise your hand if you're one of the candidates for tonight i feel like i met okay. sheena on my youtube live last e night <laughs> Yeah, yes, it was me. She was okay. so kind. <laughs> Sheena, our number one rule, we want to see you. <laughs> Sheena was yeah. the name of Hello. my favorite my favorite baby doll when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mandy, I'm going to give you the floor now. Okay, sounds good. How are you, Sheena? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you for asking. How are you, good. Mandy? I'm good. I'm well rested, finally, so... <laughs> I was actually going to work when I saw your uh, live. In oh, okay. Yeah, thanks for coming and chatting. It was very good. You guys always have the best answers and the best ideas. So Thank let's you. hear some more of it today. All right, you ready to get started? Yeah. I don't have any choice. You don't? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, Sheena, so what type of movies do you watch? I'm very inclined to movies that are funny. Um, 
I think they are um, comedies. They, they are called comedy movies. And um, uh, I usually watch them at night before I go to sleep because it makes me feel happy. And I believe that when you sleep happy, you will also wake up joyful. Good. And do you often watch movies in the theaters? I'm more on of a homebody, so I like watching um, I, I like watching films in my house together with my family or my friends. It's it's more chill and relax. So yeah, I like it more in the how in the house. Good. And what about foreign films? Do you enjoy watching foreign films more than local ones? Um as far as I can remember, when I was a child, I like watch I like watching um, foreign cartoons. And as I grow as I grow old, um, I enjoyed and I um, appreciate my country's local films. Good, <laughs> excellent. So that's part one. Are you ready to move on to part two? Yes. Okay, so Jeff's going to put it on the screen. I'm going to put it in Facebook or if anybody else wants to, it doesn't matter to me. Um, we'll put it in the chat here as well. And after I read it, you can have a minute to prepare. So let me get it in there. All right, so the question is describe a museum you want to visit in the future. You should tell me what is the museum? Where is this located? How do you get there? And please explain to me why you would like to visit it. And you can have a minute to prepare now. Okay, hey, so that is a minute. And when you are ready, Sheena, you can give me your answer. Okay. First off, I want to be honest, I'm really clueless about museums. I don't know any about um, historical things and stuff. Um, but I can remember when I was a child, um, during my elementary days, we would go. Um, we, we would go on a field trip in museums, and one thing that's vivid in my memory is uh, the local museum in our town where I grew up. And since I think um, there were not much um, uh, historical. Um, uh, um, I forgot the I forgot the term. It blew out of my mind. Uh, it's um, um, like uh, historical or old ornaments. Um, our museum was empty, so I think from from that day on, I didn't have much interest in museums. But uh, my husband is uh, fond of um, cult of different cultures and historical things. So um, he introduced me, um, I forgot the name of the museum, but he introduced me to one of the museums in a picture. It's on a local town in the Philippines as well. And it's about, um, they are preserving things from the ocean, from the beach. So it's very interesting. Uh, I am a, a beach person. So one day I would love to explore that place and know more about 
uh, that area and um, and their and their history and their um, the 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 different kinds of species in the in the ocean and how they how they lived and how they um, how they uh, took care and um, I mean how they lived. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We're going to move right on to part three. Okay. So you, um, you mentioned museums a little bit. And so what, what about, what kind of museums do you think will be more popular in the future? Uh, well, I guess we are now in a very modern uh, era. So I, I guess uh, one of the things that will be very um, popular or famous will be um, robot robotics or museums that um, showcase what will be the um, what will be the the earth or the people in the future. This will be Good. very interesting, and there's nothing nothing like it. So I think it will be very um, famous. Good. And do you think, um, I'm sorry, not do you think, but why do you think some people are interested in studying history? You mentioned your husband. So why do you think people are interested in studying history? Well, I guess some people are deeply rooted with their culture and they want to know more about themselves. Um, there's this saying that you cannot go far unless you know where you came from. So I think um, others are um, inclined to it because they want to know more about themselves. Good. And what is the greatest lesson from the past that mankind must learn? Hmm, that's a very hard question you got there. Well, I think for me, um, People need to learn not to repeat their mistakes. Uh, we, often, we often say that um, history repeats itself, but actually that's because people never learn how to, to, how to correct the past um, wrongdoings of our ancestors or the history. Uh, just like in politics, you know, um, since then, um, politicians always argue instead of um, instead of doing things for the better of their community or their government. Up until now, it's still the same. Up until now, nations um, argue. Nations are are fighting. Good. Excellent. Great, and that concludes the speaking portion of your test. <laughs> Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Uh, you, that, that was, was so, that was so tough, Mandy. <laughs> I know, I'm like, oh, Jeff, that one again. <laughs> He's sitting there wagging his head. He's been in the, in the Middle East for too long. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Yes." laughs> I hope I don't get these questions on the actual date of the exam. <laughs> Yeah, if you can answer this question, then you can answer anything like that they throw yeah. at you. Yeah, we'll we'll revisit that one when we get down to part three. So let's start back at part one. First, before we go forward, thank you for going first. I know it's nerve wracking and yes, for coming on here and for staying up late. <laughs> so it's, still, it's just seven here in our place. I oh, mean, okay. <laughs> okay, well, still, it's your weekend. So um, what do you feel besides that question being difficult how do you feel like you did overall? Mm, yeah, it was it wasn't good. It I wasn't, mean, it wasn't your enough. Best. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, yes. good. Because well, let's talk. I'm about really it. clueless yeah. about this uh, museums. I'm really <laughs> I don't really okay. know about anything. Yes. Yeah, and so I museums, haven't looked up to it also. Okay, museums is something that you're not very well versed on or not mm. an expert on, but yes. I do. Well, and I've when repeated we get to a lot of of um I repeated a lot of words and I keep 
maybe another hindrance is that I keep on thinking for another term. Mm-hmm. That's why I get stuck on yeah. what I wanted to say. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. When you come across a term that you can't remember, like the name of the specific museum, mm-hmm. or you know, when you said ornaments a and I think the name of a word. Yeah. A synonym yeah, of a word. I get stuck. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So I know that you're thinking, you know, you have the best word and it's just hanging out there like out of your reach. It's already but, on the tip I'm- of my tongue, but I cannot <laughs> find the word. <laughs> There you go. That's exactly what you need to say. You know, it's the word is on the tip of my tongue, but right now oh, it's not important. The most important thing is we don't have these items or these things in our museum because it's we don't have very much history. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but um, you did sort of try to talk about that. So let's talk about the movies. What kind of movie, what type of movies do you watch? So what category, what genre? You said, I'm very inclined to movies that are funny. I think they are comedies. They are called comedy movies. So that's saying the same thing twice. So you don't have to say that. Um, And that's fine. You said, and I usually watch them at night before I go to sleep because it makes me feel happy. Because I believe if you go to sleep happy, you will wake up joyful. So that's a really good answer. Just trying to... um, figure out a different way of saying, I usually watch them at night before I go to sleep because it makes me feel happy and because I believe. So you can, instead of saying because, because you can think of some other connectors Um, or you can end a sentence and start a new sentence. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Um, So good. Um, And then, but you, you know, you talked about joyful um, comedy, you use the word inclined. So rather than just saying, I like, you say I'm inclined to, and we usually say I'm inclined to watch or I lean towards or things like that. So I'm inclined to watch movies that are funny rather than just being inclined to, inclined to what? Inclined to watch or view or choose or pick some kind of verb after inclined okay. um and then the second one this is a great answer how often do you or how often i asked do you watch movies in theaters and i was supposed to say how often do you watch movies in theaters but you answered correctly you said i'm more of a homebody i like watching films in my house with my family or my friends you said it's more chill and relaxed so these are some great words chill and relaxed if you um Homebody is a great word, and I liked how you changed movies to films. So you did a great job there using some new, uh, you know, some synonyms. And then do you enjoy watching foreign films more than local ones? And I really liked what you said here. You got very specific, and that's a great idea. Have a specific story. So as far as I can remember, I liked watching foreign cartoons when you were when you were a kid. Um, and you said, as I grow old. So there's two ways to say this. So as I grow older or as I am growing older, or you can talk about as I grew older. Wow. So however you wanna say it. Um, so as I grew older, so from the time you were a child and you grew up, or what you said, as I grow old, I enjoy. So that I enjoy is gonna change it. So as I am growing older, I enjoy and appreciate my country's local films now. Um, so as I am growing older, because you're, you're not old yet, it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So I liked how you said enjoy and appreciate. Um, you use some better words than just happy and nice and just those easy words. So I, you're using joyful, enjoy, um, appreciate, incline, some great vocabulary words. So, and this was good because you talked about the past and you talked about, you know, the present all at once. So good tenses there. So let's talk about this museum um, or this lack of museum. (laughs) So describe a museum that you want to visit in the future. Um, And I liked how you began and you said, first off, you know, you wanted to let us know that you're not a history lover. (laughs) You know, you're not a history buff. Um, And you said, I don't know um, anything about historical things and stuff. So instead of saying stuff, we can say, I don't know much about historical things. Sometimes when we're talking, we try to add two or three um, of an object to make it seem even, but you can say, I don't know much about historical things and you don't have to say and stuff, just historical things covers it all. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you said, but um, I can remember when I was a child, I would go on field trips in museums. And one thing that's vivid in my memory is the local museum in my town where we grew up. So that town, that sticks in your mind. And you said, um, 
you said, since I think there are not much historical, so this is stories in the past. So you can say, mm -hmm. since I think there, or there were. were not many, not instead of much historical, there were not many historical, and you, and here's where you wanted to say artifacts or mm -hmm. objects. Art yes, artifacts. Um, yeah, so artifacts is the, the, the technical term. So artifacts, but we can say objects, items, um, bits and pieces, doodads, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it. <laughs> so yeah, so you can say, since there were not many historical artifacts, um, if you forget the term, you can say, since there were not many historical, well, things, I can't think of the specific museum term, but um, their historical or old items, our museum was empty. So you did good going back to past tense. It was empty. And you said, I think from that day on, I didn't have much interest in museums. So this kind of shaped your feeling on museums. Yes. So that's good background knowledge. And it's a good way to give details. Um, and you said, um, but my husband is fond of different cultures and historical things. So he introduced me to one of the museums um, in a picture. You said it's on a local town. So instead of being on, we're gonna be in a local in town. Okay. Yeah, so it's in a local town. And if you say it fast enough, nobody can tell the difference. So you could say okay. it's in a, it's in a, it's in a <laughs> so it's in a local town. That's a good shake. Close enough, yeah. <laughs> it's in a local town um, in the Philippines as well. And you said, it's about, well, they are preserving things from the ocean or from the beach. You said, I'm a beach person. So one day I would like to explore that place and know more about the area and their history. And here you were, I think, trying to get to the full, you had like six seconds, five seconds, yes. you were trying to get to the end. Mm -hmm. And it, it, that's okay, but don't make it sound like you're just trying to, you know, you can go back to the question, describe a museum that you want to read to visit in the future. And you can say, um, you know, I'd like to visit and know more about their history and the different kinds of species in the ocean. So yeah, to make a long story short, this is a place that I hope to be able to visit soon. Okay. Yes. So, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of just, there you go, nicely tie it up and end mm -hmm. it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um I did not and, reach there yeah i know you're you're like so close to the finish line you're like please turn on the timer i know it's coming uh, <laughs> but yeah so this was a really interesting way of answering this question describe a museum you want to visit in the future and i think you might be the first person that i have seen or heard do this so despite the fact that you had some stretching for words and you know repetition while you were trying to figure out what you wanted to say you did go about it in a really interesting way you said you gave me some background knowledge as to why mm -hmm. you're not a history buff why you don't really like museums and they don't really care and then you added more information as to you know your husband has really changed the way that you feel about them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, oh, it wasn't yes. that you don't like museums, you just hadn't find the right kind of museum to go to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's great. Um, and then part three, what kind of museum do you think will be more popular in the future? And you said, well, I guess now we are in a very modern era. So you said era, 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 anyone is fine. They're both the same. There's American yes. and British English. So I'll say it again, era, era whichever one okay. people want to do, ear or air, like the air in the sky. Um, so I guess one of the things that will be very popular or famous will be robotics or um, museums that showcase what will Earth or the people in and the future. If you're muted, like. we cannot hear you. Me? Is it me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I can. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my headset my headset is starting to die <laughs> i can too hear much, you too many video games okay <laughs> okay um so um you said museums that showcase what will be earth so what earth will be oh, like yes. so what not what yes. earth uh so you said what will be earth so what earth will be like or, and you said, or the people in the future. Uh, you said, this will be very interesting and there's nothing like it now. 
Um, so yeah, it will be, you could say wildly popular or extremely, um, you know, sought after. So mm -hmm. this was some, this was a great idea too. Um, and then what should be the greatest lesson from the past that mankind <laughs> must learn? Oh gosh. Okay. Um, how to pass the IELTS. That's it's like uh, a pageant question. <laughs> it's a loaded question is what it's called. <laughs> I mean, so I know that the IFNG group is very good at your opening statements. And so you can be like, you know what, there is so many things that we can learn from the past, but you know, <laughs> but I do like how you started off. You're like, hmm, that's a very hard question you've got there. Um, you said, well, I think for me, people need to learn not to repeat their mistakes. We often say that history repeats itself. Great job using this saying, this idiom, this whatever we want to call it. Um, we mm -hmm. often say that history repeats itself, but actually that's because people never learn how to correct the past wrongdoings of our ancestors or the history. And then you said, just like in politics, you know, since then, or it has been since the past, politicians always argue instead of doing things for the better of their community. Up until now, nations just argue. So you have this super strong beginning, really strong middle, and then at the end, you're kind of like, I think I'm what? done. <laughs> <laughs> So this is again where we do that O-R-E back to the O, the Oreo, back to your opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can kind of say, you know, uh, I have, let's see, uh, you know, in conclusion, I would recommend as a result or, and I've already oh. said in a nutshell or to make a long story short. Mm -hmm. So as a result, people should study history so that we cannot make those same mistakes again, as I said, as I mentioned, or as I said, uh, you know, the greatest lesson we can learn is how not to do the same mistakes twice, something like that, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of end it. Does that make, like wrap it back up? Mm -hmm. Got it? Yes, yes, got it. <laughs> but some really good things that you did. You talk so calm. It's very natural. Your pacing is wonderful. Your pronunciation is beautiful. I didn't misunderstand anything that you said. So I think that is very, you've, you don't have to worry about any of that. And I feel like you are thinking in English. I don't feel like you're translating at all. Am I correct? I don't remember <laughs> like, anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that you've got that part down and people are going to be like, how does she do that? So yeah, you just, instead of worrying about pronunciation, pacing, how fast, just need to worry about content like how i'm going okay. to present it and stick to that um what jeff and the other group tells you that o r e back yes, to the o yes. and then on part yes. two if you start to flounder think did i answer who what where when mm -hmm. why and how mm -hmm. that can always help you and then what do i hope for the future or what do i think we should learn from mm -hmm. this to keep mm -hmm. you going jeff okay sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mandy. Mm -hmm. Are you going to answer, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> it's your Actually, turn. it's my, uh, my bad. It's just my connection. I'm sorry it's to okay. interrupt you guys. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So for you, uh, good that you know your plus, um, um, Sheena. So at least you know where to work on. So on your, just on your part, to, you just need to organize and the fluency it was really noticeable your, your arms and pauses so mm -hmm. although you have good words and vocabulary so that's the thing you need to improve just keep going okay thank you Shina. so much thank, thank you. you for the chance thank you mandy God thank bless. You. Uh, yeah thank see you ya. so let's move on to our next candidate um let's bring maristella patig back <coughs> hello maristella Hi. Yeah, can we see you? Yeah, perfect. Uh, Marcella, where are you right now? I am currently in Riyadh. Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Okay. In Saudi, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, Mandy, go. Okay, how are you, Marcel Mar Maristella, right? <laughs> yes, I'm great. I'm, I'm good. Actually. Good, good. All mm -hmm. right. 
Well, we're going to go ahead and get started right away. So I'll start with part one. So Maristela, what is your favorite cold drink? Hmm. I think I have huge variety of uh, cold beverages I, that pr I prefer. I think I would usually go for sodas since um, liquors is definitely a, a no-no here in Riyadh. So most of the time I would go for Coca-Cola, Pepsi. Those are the common brands that I get to drink. Good. And how do you cool down your body or yourself during the summer or during hot weather? You know, the weird part with my personality that whenever I wanted to, to cool down or relax or chill in some time, I would all still go for coffee or tea. <laughs> Good. And what color of clothes is best for summer? I think um, the best colors that suits or goes for the summer is lighter colors, um, something that um, shows a subtle um, vibe instead of choosing the dark shades like black and that usually absorbs more heat. Good. All right. Are you ready for part two? So. <laughs> She's like, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jeff's going to put it on the screen. I'll put it into the chat box. And um, we are going to talk about hopefully a water park. <laughs> All right. So describe an enjoyable water park experience. You should say, uh, what's the name of it? Where this? Where is this located? What are the amenities or things to do there? And who did you go with? And you can have a minute to prepare now. All right, Maristela, when you are ready, you can begin. Okay. I am a type of a person who really loves outdoor activities. Um, back in my town, we have quite limited amenities such as like a uh, water park. And, and most often times we never get to have that chance or else we have to go and travel from other cities or other towns in order for us to, to experience it. I can remember back in 2016, I think, when one of my friends came from Australia for a vacation, she invited us to travel and go to Boracay Island. So from there, we get to enjoy such a different type of a water park, which we, we know, because normally water park that we usually um, expect is something that is constructed but since Barahai is a very popular island, it comes along with variety of activities that could offer its visitors. So from there, um, I get to experience riding a banana boat, which is dreadfully um, dangerous. <laughs> also the flying fish. I can remember my mom during that time before I left, like she would always remind me that never to jeopardize my, my, my job when I get, because she knows exactly how, how type am, am I to enjoy outdoor activities. So from there, also there was a scuba diving activity, which I really enjoyed, although it required us to have a short training before we get into that activity. Um, 
I think um, over the years, I have been always been looking forward to that kind of activity since, since I am all in Riyadh. And um, those kind of places are not quite um, accessible because I live in the city or else I have to travel also somewhere in the Mam or Kubar to see such places. Good, excellent. All right, let's go right on to part three. So uh, what will people look like in the future? Hmm. After um, what I mean is after all the uh, advancements that has been going on in the world, I think people would might have would might be I think I I mean would might be more less um, what's the term I cannot remember I think the people will um, have a short rotations because what I've noticed now, because of the technological advancements, everything seems to be quick. So as days go by, I know that people would might never get the time to have more patience when it comes to communication, money transfers, all transactions and everything and other services. Good. And do you think there will be less or more people in the future than today? Well, to be honest, what I've seen is that people have become more practical these days. Because from the past, as you can see, each family could mostly have at least five to six children. But these days, most people would usually limit um, procreation for at least one to two children. Good. And do you think there will be a water shortage in the future? And how can the government act to prevent water shortages? Oh, that's a heavy one. Um, because even at this moment, I think we already have water scarcity from all over the world, to mention India, Afghanistan, Yemen, I think those were most of the countries who are struggling for water source. So I think the government has to do um, great effort in order to, um, what's this, and somehow preserve the remaining water source by keeping it clean and accessible for everyone. Good. And that concludes the speaking portion of your test. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hard last question. Jeff, what's going on? Yeah. With the <laughs> it seems like I have to be the superhero here. <laughs> yeah. You know, please tell us how to save the world in less than one minute. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like you got that. Also, tell us your water park experience as well. <laughs> yeah. So let's go over your questions. Actually, first, before we start, is there anything that you had questions about or that you wanted to comment on how you felt you did? Tell me something you did good. Um, I think I had to work on more with the speaking part two. Part because two? Because I usually rattle on that area. Okay. I, I, I have a lot of things on my mind that I wanted mm -hmm. to speak about. But I think the um, the organization is lacking. Okay, good. This is always good. I love to hear what people self assess or what kind of self assessment you give yourself because mm -hmm. uh, you guys are always harder on yourselves than we are than I am. <laughs> and it's very good, I think, for you to show everybody watching. Like I, this is what I say, and I am thinking. And, you know, thinking about what I did and I can identify what I could do better and what I did good. Mm -hmm. So, but you did say this, what you did good. I have lots of ideas. I have lots of things I want to say, but what I could do better is I could organize it better. And mm -hmm. Marcella, you know, two minutes flies by very quickly. Yes, if you have a lot I to say. I felt like it's <laughs> the longest two minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So yeah, so when we get to part two, let's talk about some, you know, strategies for that. So uh, mm -hmm. what is your favorite cold drink? You said, hmm, I think I have a huge variety of cold beverages that I prefer. Uh, I think I would usually go for sodas since liquors 
Um, so liquors, when you said liquors is, so, so since you put liquors with yeah. an S, you want to yeah. say liquors are. Right. So liquors are definitely a no-no here in Riyadh. And this is a great thing. A no-no is very common to say. We say it to children. That's a no-no. But we also say it to adults as well. When you double no, it's like an absolute no, don't do it. So yeah, if people don't understand that kind of term or whatever, I, I love how you used it. It was perfect, very natural. So if something is a no-no, it's forbidden. So we could say mm -hmm. texting and driving is a no-no. <laughs> so yeah, this was great. Um, how do you cool down your body during the summer or hot weather? You said, you know, the weird part with my personality is that whenever I wanted to cool down or relax and chill, um, I would always still go for a coffee or tea. And you might throw in that adjective hot, a hot coffee and a hot tea, because it does seem uh, odd to have a hot mm -hmm. drink on a hot day. So yeah, you might put that in there. And I would round out your answer and say, I, I really don't know why I do this. It seems, um, and have you heard the term mm -hmm. counterintuitive? It's very long, but have you heard? Mm -hmm. It seems counterintuitive that, or it seems odd that I would pick a hot drink to relax on a hot day, but that's just how I am. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put the word counterintuitive into the chat in case anybody mm -hmm. wants it. <laughs> So let's see if I can spell it right. <laughs> oh my gosh, please help me out, Google. <laughs> there we go, counterintuitive. So intuitive is like our intuition, like what we you know, lean towards and opposite would be counter. So it seems the opposite of natural. Um, this was a great way of describing it. Um, what are, what color of clothes is best for summer? You said, I think the best colors that suits or goes for the summer. So when we say the best colors that suits, just drop that S. So the best colors that suit, suit. summer are lighter colors. Um, so colors and are, because it's plural, you want to use are instead of is. Um, I think the best colors that suit the summer are lighter colors. Um, and what kind of vibe did you say? I couldn't quite catch it because it cut out on me. You said versus a dark vibe. You Darker said, uh, vibe. I think that catches uh, warm, warm, uh, warm. I think you said something that shows some kind of vibe instead of choosing darker colors like black that absorbs ah, heat. subtle vibe. A subtle, subtle vibe. vibe. Thank you. Thank you. I liked your, I liked the, <laughs> the terms that you used there. A subtle vibe instead of choosing dark colors like black that absorbs heat. And here might be a good way to use a specific example. You can say, you know, take for example me or, you know, I live in Riyadh, which is a very hot country. And I typically wear white pastels, you know, light colors. And also you can talk about the fabric too. You don't have to just talk about the color. You can talk about the type of fabric. Like, so light colors and light fabrics. So good. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to use yourself in part one because it's about you. So good. You did it on the other ones though, when you talked about soda and hot coffee and tea and made me very thirsty. So, all right. <laughs> Describe an enjoyable water park experience. So this one, you did have a lot of good ideas. You said, I'm a type of a person who really loves outdoor activities. And you said, back in my town, we have uh, quite limited. It is, or we have quite limited um, things like this. And you said, most of the times we never get that chance or we have to travel. Um, so this is your wonderful introduction, your background information, which is great. Um, and you said, I can remember back in 2016 or 2016, either way is great. Um, and you talked about your friend. You said she invited us to go to, is it Borahai? Is that how you say it? Borahai. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you said, so, uh, from there, we got to enjoy such a different type of water park. Um, you said, normally the water parks are a certain way, but since Borahai is a very popular island, it comes with a variety of experiences. And you said, I get to, so it's in the past. So you want to say, I got, I got to, I got to experience riding a banana boat. <laughs> you said, which is dreadfully dangerous. This is a great add on to your sentence, kind of, you know, a phrase there. Um, and you talked about, I would leave the part about your mom out. 
Um, and I know it sounds like it's great information if you were just talking with me, but you wanted to get in specific items. And so that is going to almost look like you're going off track, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. So if it was a, talking about a dangerous activity, you could definitely use that, but it's more about the water park. Um, and then you said also there was a scuba diving activity, although it required us to have a short training. Um, you, you said it was enjoyable and I really liked your ending. You said, I think over the years, I have always been looking forward to that kind of activity. And those kind of places are not quite accessible because I live in the city. Um, and then you can kind of end it by saying how this overall experience or trip made you feel. Did it make you feel, and you didn't say 2016 wasn't that long ago. So you weren't a little kid. Did it make you feel like a kid again? Did it make you feel you know, did it, did it, um, you know, it was beyond your wildest dreams. You, you want to go again, or you want to see more water parks. What did that make you feel? Mm. You can tell me right now. <laughs> I think that's something that would make me feel young again. Yeah. At some point, it's something to look forward to another adventure, I think new adventure yeah. this yeah. time, but, um, in an older version of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is great. So you can say, you know, uh, looking back on this, I really felt like a kid again. You know, I'm not, I'm not a grandma by any means, but I'm also not fancy free like children. And this was a great opportunity to feel like that again. So yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, and so when you're on part two, like if you're talking about a movie or a book or an experience that you go to, my, my kind of intuition on this is to maybe go with two items. And you did that, the banana boat and the scuba diving, because you're gonna give the background, then you kind of describe where you're going, two things that happened there, and then you end it, and then you're gonna be out of time. So we said background, what it looked like, two experiences and an ending. So that's five items. So that's like 20 seconds each. And then your two minutes is over. It just goes like that in the blink of an eye. So Jeff can jump in if he thinks more, but the rate at which you're speaking, which is very natural, um, I think going with two items. Well, I can say the way, um she's and she speak it's really clear and with emotion so i really like that you don't mm -hmm. need to make it very fast just to show fluency fluency is not about speed as long as you can understand yeah. continuously and i think so maristella's pro problem here is that she has lots of stuff she wants to tell us um <laughs> but yeah and picking the two ones that stuck whatever comes to your mind first is most likely the best one to describe um yeah Sometimes, uh, Maristella, just forget about the grammar or big words. Just try to speak continuously because that would matter most rather than you want to give us a good words, but you will stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So I think if you look at it, you know, and then we can always default back to what Jeff has said before. If you feel like it's not very organized, you can do the who, what, when, where, why. And then how being, how did it make you feel? Or what would you, how has this changed you? Or how has this, you know, whatever. So, and then part three is difficult. What will people look like in the future? And I saw your face on this and I felt the same way when I read this. <laughs> so I think this might mean phys physically, like, will we change the way oh, that we yeah. look? Like fashion sense. Yeah. Maybe fashion, um, I've read a lot of sci-fi books, so that kind of shapes mm. me. Mm. Will people live longer because of technology? So we'll look older, mm. you know, will yeah. we, um, will we start putting, you know, artificial like eyes, arms, will we kind of become yeah. cyber? Will there you know? be a microchip? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Will we all be walking around with Facebook's attempt at glasses, you know, plastic mm. surgery, cosmetics, um, also the world is becoming smaller, if that makes sense. So I would yeah. never have known you five years ago. 
Um, and a lot of people meet people from different cultures. So we're kind of intermarrying. I know in the United States, when you look at mm -hmm. people, you cannot look at someone and be like, oh, you are from this country based on the way you look or your accent. Yeah, like you don't speech, know anymore. Yeah, yeah you don't know. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of go that way. You can go many different ways. So if you were going to answer for me really quickly now, knowing physically, um, what would you say? So how will, do you, what will people look like in the future? Yeah, that's why I did not get that actually, to be honest. Well, your answer sounded good. <laughs> yeah, well, probably because I was still um, in the midst of my reminiscing uh -huh. my past activities and all of that yeah. and I was quite overjoyed and then all of a sudden I came across with that kind of question yeah and your which, face was um, like basically what? Uh, <laughs> yeah and yeah and basically me I am not into um what's this uh sci-fi um yeah and you don't have exactly so if you don't read sci-fi stuff or watch sci-fi mm -hmm. stuff yeah. You're not going to lean that way. So maybe you can say, <laughs> what will people look like? You mean, do you mean physically? Yeah. I think we will look exactly the yeah. same as we do now. I don't think we are yeah. going to change. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's why I, 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 yeah. I think I, I went on the... About being what busy. What kind of people, mm -hmm. yeah. What kind yeah. of people will we have in the future? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can... You can do that, but yeah, try to think of something physical or you can even say fashion, you know, you kind of alluded to fashion sense, you know, mm. is that becoming more important nowadays to people, you know, that they're going to be dressing nicer and, you know, making sure their appearance and shorter, shorter and revealing than yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Definitely. So yeah, that also is a, a factor from globalization that we have the influence of different cultures on That's our cultures. cultures yeah. So yeah, you can say, I think people will be dressing um, more like, uh, you know, I am writing a paper on the Korean wave, Hallyu. So I think people will be dressing more like South Koreans because they're ultra popular right now with Squid Game. Yes, because and I was also <laughs> torn um, between uh, like, the present time that would what could might happen on the next three years mm -hmm. or on the days that we already seeing spaceships in yeah i don't know <laughs> the timeline if it's when it's gonna be That's this is difficult yeah because when it says in the future that is a wide yeah. open yeah. interpretation <laughs> it's hugely open so you can say in the, the immediate future, future the, the first thing that comes in my mind is spaceship, outer space, um, mm -hmm. yeah, more on scientific um, yeah. revolution. Yeah. So you could talk things. along yeah. that, you know, uh, another student had mentioned robotics. So you could say, you know, I think in the immediate future, there'll be no big changes. We'll still look the same as we do today, but maybe in mm -hmm. the next century, we will be more, you know, along the lines of robotics or, you know, cyber people will have robotic mm -hmm. parts put into them, or they'll have a lot of plastic surgery done so they can continue to look young or mm -hmm. things like that. I don't know. <laughs> have you ever seen the movie or read the book, The Hunger Games? I know that yeah, I it, I happened to watch one of the season. I, um, what's this episode? Um, one of the um, movies? movies. Yeah, I do know uh, that. Like in the capital city of that book yeah. and that movie, mm -hmm. the Region people look 12. so strange um, mm -hmm. because yeah. they're all about looking young. Um, so they yeah, just yeah. look very wildly strange. <laughs> yeah, and it's one thing that that really came into my mind like scenes like those which I think I am not really into it or I'm mm -hmm. not quite familiar about it or maybe probably I just don't mind it at all yeah so yeah I mean you can kind of be like you know I'm not an expert on this and appearances really aren't a big deal to me but maybe I could imagine mm -hmm. it like the book the hunger games where people mm -hmm. are dressing kind of crazy and dyeing their hair and mm -hmm. doing all kinds of, of things world. to their yeah. body like, I think they look mm -hmm. like a cat in one of them. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of nerding out here. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So do you think there will be less or more people in the future than today? You said, um, uh, well, to be honest, what I have seen is people have become more practical these days. And you kind of 
danced around it, but eventually got to people aren't having as many children, basically. <laughs> yeah, procreating is a great word that you said, as you can see, each family can have five or six children now, um, but these are in the past, but these days people would usually limit procreation or procreating and to one or two children. So yeah, just for practical reasons. So yeah, and I think a lot of studies have just come out. You can even say that there have been a lot of studies that have just come out recently showing that the um, birth rate in many countries has fallen. So fallen. the birth rate has fallen or decreased, meaning there are less and less children being born and to replace- some countries are even imposing it. Yes. Like the birth control, like mm -hmm. something like that. Like yeah. China, I think they are Forced. on birth mm -hmm. control. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of different ways that you can go with that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can, and then you want to kind of round it out. So, you know, to sum up or as a result of these measures, you know, the rising mm -hmm. cost of raising a family and forced birth control as a result of these things, I think our population will be less or decrease as compared mm -hmm. to now. And then do you think there will be a water shortage in the future? And I liked how you said that's a heavy one because even at this moment, so you're telling me the future is now. The water shortage is now. It's not in the future. It is now. <laughs> um, you said, I think we already have water scarcity. This was great. Water shortage. Another great word is water scarcity. Um, you know, to mention. So instead of saying to mention, you want to say just to mention a few like India, <laughs> Afghanistan, or you can say, let me mention a few. I'll tell you, or here's a few to mention, to name, to name a few. India, Afghanistan, Yemen, and you mentioned another one. I think those are most of the countries who are struggling for water. Um, so I think the government has to do great efforts. So not do great effort, but make great efforts um, mm -hmm. to somehow preserve the remaining clean water. Um, so yeah, this is a great answer. Um, and then you can end it by saying kind of that if, if this doesn't happen, then this will happen. So if we do not have a solution for water scarcity and water shortages, we will see what, you know, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes we've talked about in the past before, if you don't know how to explain why something will happen, tell me what will happen if that doesn't occur. And then you've explained it by default. Okay. But like Jeff had said, you know, your pronunciation is great. The, the rate at which you're speaking is wonderful too. You seem very comfortable, except for when I asked you about us looking. <laughs> They're like, uh, next question, please. <laughs> and it's something I cannot do anything about it. Like I, can, I, I know. Can shut my mouth off, but my face won't. <laughs> and, and you know, that's okay. A face, we all have them, most of us anyway. They are part of conversation. You know, you cannot... Yeah hide every emotion that you come across and you can even say i'm sorry did i hear you correctly could you repeat that <laughs> what will people look like in the future is that right or just say i'm sorry can you repeat that and or maybe could you say that in another way yeah so they may come back and say physically what will people look like in the future i don't know <laughs> it depends on your examiner jeff so oh, yeah, yeah if you mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Maristela, um, this one is just okay. only additional to improve. On your part one, actually, you gave us good answer, but it's better if you will give us the reason why. So at least we understand okay. why you like this mm -hmm. or not. And then for your part two, um, actually, I was amazed because what I'm telling to the members, actually, you did it. It's mm -hmm. just um, do some transition because there's always... Um, specific transition for example about time about when so use a transition yeah. word a transitional process so that's the technique okay that's for the part two but for your part three you really need to improve your part three because your answer is very short and it's not direct mm -hmm. on the question so be careful on that okay so okay. like um oreo what they are saying give your answer the reason and give us example so at least we understand more and make your um, answer will be more longer. Um, just only to give example, like in California, they're struggling with water. Mm -hmm. Like in America, they are melting pot, like what Mandy said. The diversity make us all 
physical features will be the same in the future. <laughs> yeah, and and now there's a multiverse. Maybe it will look like the same. Oh in, my gosh! On, the, <laughs> on our avatars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it, Marstella. But Thank overall, you. we have potential, and the way you speak, the, your all your words is really great. So just keep Thank on. Thank you, sir. But you did well. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you so thank much you for so coming. Much for <laughs> so thank you. I will just uh, call for the last candidate. I don't know if she's here. She's also from Saudi Arabia. Um, Christine Divina Gracia, are you here? Please raise your hand. Because after this, I'm going to call a new one. I'm trying to message you on WhatsApp. So please say or raise your hand. So yes, Mandy. Otherwise, I will call Lester. Lester? I see Lester's hand. Ah, wait, Lester. Yes, okay, so thank you, Lester, um, for saving <laughs> our last um, last candidate. So, Lester, please tell us where you're from. Um, I'm from Nueva Ecija Province here in the Philippines, and I also work as a nurse here. So it's kind of late now. What time is it there? It's already twelve. Well, past twelve. 12. Okay. So, without further ado. Okay, you can have sleep now after this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, so Maristella, really quick, Lester, Maristella asked in the chat, what does Oreo stand for? Can you tell everybody what Oreo stands for? Do you know? <laughs> Ice cream. Okay. Actually, it was questioned in the other group, group seven or eleven. Um, so Oreo means your opinion. For example, if you will ask, do you think it's it's um do you believe in this so you will your opinion yes or no mm -hmm. and then the reason why you do you think you believe in that and then give us example like a general example like what i said if the question is water shortage so give an example like um a world problem or even your local national issues so everyone could relate and then opinion again so you'll just restate your answer for closing so okay. yeah that's it okay <laughs> All right, are you ready to get started, Lester? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, let's get going. So, um, Lester, how did your parents teach you to choose friends? Well, my parents had a lot to say about my friends during my childhood. They wanted me to be part of a group that is academically inclined and at the same time, knows how to do sports like basketball and volleyball so that in the future I can have um, a sense of cooperation and um, companionship with them. Good. And do, how do you save your mobile number on your phone? Or how do you save a <laughs> mobile number on your phone? Well, there are a lot of ways on how a person can save a phone number to his or her phone. Well, in my case, I usually let the person to type in the digits of her cellular phone or his cellular phone and then save it on my phone book. Good. And then do you change your mobile number frequently and why or why not? I don't actually. I still got my phone number since I was first year in college. And I think that it is not just a cheap way to save money, but also a form of identity to me. First, because it is the number that I used even before until now. And it really made, um, made me more familiar to the other person or speci specifically my friends who got my number. Good. All right, so that's part one. Are you ready to move on to part two? Yes. All right, so I'm gonna put it into the chat box and Jeff's gonna put it on the screen. Mm, okay. And are you able, hang on one second. Yeah, I already saw it on the chat box. Okay, good, I'm glad that you saw it. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. Tell us how you learn to ride a bicycle or drive a car or something similar. Um, tell me who taught you, where did you practice, when did you learn it, and how did you feel after learning this skill? So you can have a minute to prepare now.
All right. And so when you are ready, Lester, you can give your answer. Okay. Just recently, actually last week, I came to experience to learn how to drive a four-wheel four vehicle, specifically a car. It was a part of my um, yearly tradition or um, promise to myself to keep learning and studying things that I don't know that I can use in the future. So I decided to enroll to A1 driving school, which is a popular driving school here in my city, which is Cabaretuan City. And I met Dave, who is a professional driver himself, who taught me how to drive. And at first, I was really nervous on taking this examination or this course because it is my first time and I don't know much about this um, kind of concept. He taught me about the theor theoreticals wherein we discussed parts of the car as well as how to fix the fix them once they got problems. And um, on the later dates, we moved on to technicals wherein I was able to experience to drive on the road, read road signs, review rules and regulations and laws that are um, important to know for, uh, for a driver like me. And I would say that most people should learn how to drive in a school or in a driving school because it doesn't just give a person confidence to drive in the road, but they would be also refreshed and get more knowledge about the rules and the different um, laws that involves in driving. It would make them more equipped. Mm -hmm. Good, excellent. It would make them more equipped. All right. I'm going to call Dave to teach my daughter to drive. <laughs> okay. What kinds of vehicles uh, do you think we will drive in the future? In a futuristic view, I can definitely see that vehicles on the road would be converted into flying ones. I heard that Tesla company is developing a model of a car that can flew around everywhere. And that is what uh, the future looks like when it comes to transportation. Good. And then do you think space tourism will be successful? Well, that is definitely a hard question, but I think it could be probably one of the futures, um, of one of the future of our transportation here on earth, but it would definitely take a lot of um, innovative steps to make. And as of now, I don't think it would happen anytime soon. Good. And let's continue talking about things off of you know, space, um, which is more important to explore new planets where people can live or to save the planet Earth to live on? Well, exploring our options for the survival of humanity is a great idea. However, I think that I would opt to prioritize to explore more about here on Earth or, or how we will be, will thrive as humankind. First, because we almost got all our resources here, like food, air, and water. And there's so much more to explore here on Earth than on the galaxy. Good. All right. And that concludes your speaking portion. You're done. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for jumping in at the last minute. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about, actually, first, you tell me, how do you think you did, Lester? Anything you want to say? Well, um, I, was enrolled in, I was enrolled in a, a review center in, here in the Philippines, and most of my coaches um, have a feedback on my fluency. Good. They say that I don't speak spontaneously, and I sound monotonous most of the time. 
and I think I was able to improve a bit on this specific coaching. But um, the ideas on the question, I think, is the one that I have to improve on. Okay. More. Yeah. So, like the content of your answer? Yes. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, I haven't heard you before today, so I can't speak to where you have come from, but I can speak to where you are now. Um, and so I do hear some pauses when you're talking, but that is not unnatural or not. Um, I'd say that's not unusual, actually. Um, you'll run into native speakers who speak so fast and they don't breathe and they just keep going, going, going. And that's ridiculous, but that's how they talk. So, um, and I can get that way too, if I have had too much sugar, but anyway, <laughs> so, but I think it is good to speak and to have a, a, an appropriate pause while you are thinking about what you're going to say next. And I didn't feel there were too many that were extremely long to where I was like, is he done talking? What's he going to do? It, it didn't, it didn't come across that way. So you just want to make sure your pauses are not in the middle of a sentence, if that makes sense. So just like if you're writing where they would be, where you would put a comma or a period, or maybe like, you know, a hyphen or parentheses kind of like that. Um, and so let's talk about your answers. So how did your parents teach you to choose friends? You said, well, my parents had a lot to say about my friends during my childhood. They wanted me to be a part of a group that is academically inclined. So we're gonna say that was because that's in the past. Yes. That was academically inclined. And at the same time, knows how to do sports. They had, your parents had very few requirements, right? <laughs> <laughs> they just wanted you to be a genius and an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you told me why I liked how you told me why because of the cooperation and the teamwork aspect. So this is a really strong beginning. Very good answer at the beginning. Um, and then how do you save a mobile number on your phone? You said, well, there are a lot of ways on how a person can save a phone number to his or her phone. And you said, well, in my case, so let's try to not use well so much. I use so, so is like my best friend. I love to say so. And I think you like well. So instead of saying, well, you can say in my case, I usually let the person type in the digits. Um, of their phone number and yeah that's how i save it um do you uh, this is a hard one because it's there's not much more you can say uh but you did tell me there's a lot of ways a person can save um so you could also think of why do you let the other person type it in versus you typing it in mm, okay so, what what would you tell me like hey mandy you need to type your number in so i don't make a mistake is that why so i know how to spell your name that kind of thing and you can say i do it this way so that that person puts their number in and their name and i don't misspell it or get a digit wrong is that that's what probably i'm thinking when i said that answer yeah like why <laughs> why you do it that way uh, um mainly because so so i can i can reduce my errors on typing the number of the person yeah. and to make the person i'm getting the number at least on at ease mm -hmm. yeah it's like, um he or she is giving it to me um easily or yeah directly they're giving it to you directly yeah. yeah yeah definitely yeah also it's a good trick like if you forget someone's name you can be like hey hey bro can you put your number in my phone and don't forget to type your name too yeah like, oh now i know your name <laughs> so. that's, that's a strategy that i'm going to take note of <laughs> <laughs> that's because i am bad at names sometimes <laughs> all right <laughs> um so and then your um Third question, do you change your mobile number frequently? Why or why not? And I've heard people say similar to what you said, but I was thought your idea was a little bit refreshing because you said, I actually, you said, I don't actually. And your, in, your, your emotion was good there. You kind of just jumped right on. I don't actually. I still have got my phone number since I was my first year in college. And I think that is not just a cheap way to save money, but also it's a form of identity to me. That number is connected to you. 
like, you know, it's part of you. Um, so people associate that number with you. And nowadays, Lester, uh, I don't know, you're much younger than me. I used to have to remember a person's phone number, like the digits, the 10 or 11 digits. You don't have to do that. You just have to find their name. So I'm curious as to if you didn't have your phone, whose number would you know to type into a payphone? Just your mom's maybe? <laughs> well, I don't have any don't... <laughs> memories in my head. Oh no! So you would be <laughs> up a creek without a paddle. Yeah, okay. I just got the telephone number of our company, of our hospital, because it's just seven digits, I guess. Mm, yeah, yeah. Sometimes if you hear an advertisement for a phone number, that's the one that's stuck in, stuck in your head. That's the only one I would remember. So, and then you said um, first, um, because it is the number that I've used even before until now. So it's the number that I've used, let's just say it's the number that I've used up until now. Um, mm. And so not even before until now. So it's the number that I've used up until now. And it has really made me more familiar. So it's not familiar, but it makes your friends, you could say my friends associate or connect this number to me. Does that make sense? Yes, so definitely. yeah. Yeah. Have you ever gotten a wrong number phone call before? Like someone calls and it's been a wrong number and they're like, but I thought you were such and such. I thought well, you were the person. Yeah. yeah I people it. really think of numbers as being yours. They belong to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, so why or why not? Um, and then you did have a good long answer on this one. It was just that second one. Um, I mean, long for part one. How do you save a mobile number on your phone? And I didn't ask you why or why not, but at least on part one, try to answer why, or you can give a specific example and say, you know, just last week I met a new friend, I handed her my phone and she put her number in and it was easy peasy, it was done, very easy to save. So, and that gives you a little bit more um, to say. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. It's dip those those really simple questions, in my opinion, are a little bit more difficult than these complex ones. So, all right. So this is a really timely question, part two. Tell us how you learned to ride a bicycle or drive a car. Did you really just learn to drive? No. This is true. Oh, you liar! <laughs> <laughs> my, my first, my first question was was about the bicycle, but oh. um, after my time, I changed. You, it. So you did beautifully. I I, I can't think of any ideas on the bicycle topic. Okay. I'm really, is Dave real? No. Oh my gosh. None of it were real. <laughs> I just became emotionally attached to Dave and you just took him out of my life. Okay. <laughs> All right. See, so you said just recently, actually last week, um, I came to experience how to drive a four wheel vehicle, specifically a car. Um, so here you're doing a great job, but you're kind of saying the same thing twice. So last week, recently, those are the same, a four wheel vehicle, a car, those are the same. So I thought when you said four wheel vehicle, you were going to mean like an all-terrain vehicle or, you know, something off road, but a car. Yeah. I got to drive a four wheel car. Um, you said it was part of my yearly tradition or promise to myself to keep learning and studying things that I don't know. So um, you're here, you're talking about like, a, is this a new year's resolution yeah, or so something like that? So there we go. <laughs> but <laughs> even if you didn't have that term, you did a good job talking about it. Like new year's resolution was sitting here and you talked about it and I understood what you meant. So great job. Um, so it's part of my yearly tradition or promise to myself to keep learning and studying things that I don't know. And then here you paused a little bit that I can still use in the future. So um, I would either drop that I can use in the future or try to shorten that pause. So, and I kind of know why you said it, like you're kind of telling me why you do this but it was added kind of with big pause. You said, so I decided to roll, uh, enroll to A1. So you don't enroll to something, you enroll in something. So I decided to enroll in A1 driving school, which is a popular driving school. I met fake Dave, who is a professional <laughs> driver himself. Sorry, I'll get over it. Um, you said, at first I was really nervous um, on taking this course to take this course. 
um, or examination. And I don't know much about this concept. So you're in the past. I didn't know much about this concept. He talked with me about the theoreticals uh, about the car, how to fix them when they get problems. And you said on later dates, we moved on to technical. So you have some really great ling lingo here. Theoretical, so theory, technical, practical things, you know, the rules and regulations that are important to know for a driver like me. I would say that most people should learn to know how to drive in a school. And you just convinced me right here. So I was going to enroll my kid, but now I can't <laughs> um, to drive in a school because it doesn't just give them the confidence, but they will be refreshed on the rules and things that they need to know. So I for me personally, besides those small like repetitions, like I didn't know how to take the, I was nervous to take this course or examination last week, recently, a four wheel vehicle, a car, those kinds of things right there. That's the only part that I would drop. And that one big pause that I can use in the future, I would, you know, work on those things. Um, but other than that, I think you had a really good organization. So you talked about what you and Dave supposedly learned first and then second, and then why they were good. Jeff, you can jump in on that part too. I thought his organization was pretty good. <laughs> and yeah, it's just only, I think you need to be sound more um, good, like the clarity, because I think that's one of the comment of your review center, especially, you know, if you're a Filipino man and you're not used to English, we are almost the same, like monotonous. So try to make it incorporate. <laughs> Since you incorporated Dave, so better incorporate some character on your voice. <laughs> Good. Yeah, more natural. Yeah. And what you can do also, Lester, is, um, you know, if you have access to Google Docs, you can do the type to text feature. So you just hit start and you give your answer. So give your answer how you normally would, it'll type it out for you. And then you can read it out loud back to yourself and adding emotion into it. Does that make sense? So it's almost like, have you? do you have any children or nieces or nephews? None. No, no children in your life. <laughs> Animals, pets, things like that. Anyone no. who is considered to be you know, younger than you. So when you're talking to kids, you don't talk to them like you talk to adults. You kind of give a little bit more emotion, a little bit more, you know, happiness or whatever feeling with it. So, you know, you could reread this instead of saying just last week, I actually came to experience how to drive a four wheel vehicle. So then you're going to change it just last week. Actually, I came to experience how to drive a four wheel vehicle, a car. It was a car. It was this car. Um, it's part of my yearly tradition or promise, you know, changing the tone of your voice. This is easy for me because I read to kids all the time. So sorry. Um, otherwise, they'll say you're boring and they're mean. So, <laughs> all right. And so we moved on to part three. What kind of vehicles do you think we will drive in the future? Someone in here put in here like the Jetsons. Have you ever seen that TV show, The Jetsons? Not yet. Oh, you're Sorry. so young. <laughs> okay, maybe you can Google it. So you said in the futuristic view, I can definitely see that vehicles on the road will be converted into flying ones. And I loved how you gave a specific example here. I heard that tes the Tesla company um, is developing something that can, and you said can flew around. So don't flew, it can fly. So flew is in the past. So you're talking about now that can fly around everywhere. Um, and then you kind of, so that's your opinion, your reason, example, and then state back to your opinion. How do you feel about this? What will this change? What will be the result of flying vehicles? So tell me right now, as a result or because of this, what will happen? Well, because of this step, more and more companies will be converting their four-wheel vehicles into a flying cars in the future. And yeah. it would be a great development for the world yeah do you think it will help with traffic do you think it'll create new problems what do you think about it absolutely it will solve different problems such as traffic traffic and pollution and it would definitely uh cause a lot to many people for, for to, own, to own such a vehicle 
Yeah. So uh, at first it might cost a lot for people to own this kind of new tech, but I think once it becomes, you know, more no more normalized, I think everyone will be able to own a flying vehicle, but we need Dave to teach us how to drive them. <laughs> All right. And so do you think space tourism will be successful? Um, this is, you said that's a definitely a hard question, but I think it could probably be one of our future, the future, one of the, one of the future of our transportation. So not one of, but it could probably be one of the future forms of transportation. So one of the future, what? Future types, future kinds, future forms of our transportation here on earth. I wouldn't add here on earth because that's the point of space travel is it's not on earth. Okay. So yeah, don't you don't have to add that it's on earth. Um, mm -hmm. You said, um, but it would definitely take a lot of innovative steps to make happen. So you said to make, but to make happen. So instead of saying, but Lester, what could you say instead? That sounds a little more polished instead mm -hmm. of, but you could say, however, however. Uh, you know, con you know, um, yeah. However is all I can think of right now. However, it would definitely take a lot of innovative steps to make this happen. And as of now, I don't think it will happen. And then tell me why, why won't it happen? It's too expensive. It's yes too it's far too off expensive. and it's um people are not that open to this kind of steps mm -hmm. and the government doesn't support these innovative steps being uh, mandated and being done by private companies yeah that's right they can't control it can they yeah. yes and it might have a little bit of a danger factor you know it might be a little bit dangerous as with anything new that comes around we have to pass rules and regulations to make sure it's safe for the everyday person. So, yeah, and you can say that the cost of it is out of reach. It's beyond some people's budget. Not everyone has a million to lay down to just circle the earth for fun. Um, and so which is more important to explore new planets where people can live or to save the planet Earth? to live on. You said, well, exploring our options for, for, for the survival of humanity is a great idea. However, this was a great intro too. However, I think it would be, I think I would opt to prioritize um, Earth first because, you know, we've got almost all of our resources here and there is so much more here to explore on Earth than on the galaxy. So, and there's not just one galaxy, but we can say then on other galaxies. Um, and let's see if you can expand it a little more by me asking you a question. Um, so why should we try to save Earth? Well, um, what is the question again? Sorry. Yeah. Why, why should we try to? Why should we try to stay here and save Earth? Like, and then you can tell me if we choose to go to Mars, we will have. It will take a long time. So sometimes you don't know why we should save Earth, but you know why we shouldn't go. And explore other things. Yeah. The, uh, I think the primary reason is that this is the only um, a place that that is scientifically proven to um, to to have a prosperous life for Sustain human and human animals. life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. And. Yeah. Um, there, there are no proven evidence evidence of um, life outside Earth, and that is why I think we must focus ourselves on exploring our motherland. Yeah, good. So Earth is unknown, and Mars would be kind of taking a gamble. It's an unknown. Mm. So are we at the point where we're ready to risk all of our time and resources to go for an unknown or should we try to fix what we already have? That's kind of the, yeah, good, excellent. Okay, and then some other people are saying the only planet that is habitable for humans, mm -hmm. good. And then someone, it's the only livable place. And they're also wondering if you think that you could use automobile inside aside from car. So I think that's good. What do you think, automobile versus car? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're saying yes, he would. Lester yes. says yes. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Yeah. So on your part three, just working on developing it and stretching it out a little bit more using that structure, that O-R-E-C, 
or OREO structure will help you to anchor it, given an example. Um, so you did a great job saying, you know, Tesla as an example. Um, and then when we talked about space travel, you could give the specific example of space tourism that has happened. So you can say, you know, recently these people went to travel to tour space, but it wasn't really a big deal because all they did was circle the planet and it cost them millions of dollars to do this. And that's not really practical for the everyday person. Does that make sense? Somebody's yeah. telling me it's inspiration for, is that the name of this rocket? <laughs> so, oh by, oh, by Elon Musk, sorry. <laughs> okay, there we go. Thank you, Chanel. <laughs> All right, Jeff, you can jump in. Okay, um, this is just only additional for your part one. So just this, please avoid parroting if the question is written like this. So please do not repeat those questions. Okay, because it will affect your vocabulary. And then, yeah, part three, make it more um, longer by this um, by these strategies, the Oreo. Like for me, I don't use Oreo, but I have my own like answer, yes or no, with very st uh, stressing word, like absolutely yes, absolutely no. And then your reason why, an example, and then the effect, like what Mandy said. Other than that, uh, just only um, try to practice more of your voice. So you can practice like your like a singer pronunciation. <laughs> okay. I, I, I sing all the time to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, do you have any question? No, yes. not uh, I'm just so okay. grateful for this opportunity. Yeah, and we are happy that you jump in. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you and to everyone. I just want to say um, the reason why we, I came up to this kind of question, although this is not really a type of IELTS question, but because every day I'm posting article of the day and it's really good to learn new things because reading is learning. So it's not about for IELTS, but it's also to feed your mind. Okay, that's my purpose. <laughs> okay so, and yeah so that's it um ifng and mandy mandy uh last question how do you save numbers because for me i put uh, for example if, if it's my colleague i use the first word as my workplace and then the name something like that. oh yeah so like if if it's one of my so some of my kids friends mom's name kids friends moms they're like their first name and their last name is uh, Jessica's mom, like that will be her <laughs> first name, and that will be their last name. So yeah, Something I'll do like that. that. Or like, like I'll be like, if I had your number, I'll be like Jeff from IFNG. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I let people put their number in actually. So yeah, that that I just like Lester does, so I don't make a mistake. Or I do appreciate that WhatsApp has the QR. I use like WhatsApp and Zalo and um, WeChat. They have that QR that you can just be like, yeah, here's my okay. here's my QR code. You can scan it. So that's cool. <laughs> We're getting lazy and lazy. <laughs> I know, I know. I cannot. You know, the only number that I I I picked on Lester about what number can he remember? My kids don't even know my phone number, Lester. So they would be stuck too. At least yeah, they know yeah. 911. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, everyone, that's it for this month. And see you again next month. It's December and we're on almost last, um, last month of the year. So we're looking mm -hmm. forward to 2022. <laughs> yeah. So I Yay. hope everyone learns. And actually, Mandy, you know, we've been we've doing, um, we've doing this for more than a year. I'm still learning every time you <laughs> give your comment. I learn every time you guys talk. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. So everyone, in le uh, everyone is learning too. Okay. Thank exactly. you. Have a great night. And Thanks again, Lester. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Bye.